Good day, everyone. Thank you for spending time with us on this webinar to discuss ways we are addressing carbon reduction for our customers. My name is Chris Lyons, your host and moderator for today. I've been working in the energy industry for the past 40 years, with more than half of that time at solar turbines. But as, as you can imagine, I've seen several cycles, changes, and impacts to our business over that time. I started my career in 1979, working predominantly in the Gulf of Mexico, where we experienced the second oil crisis due to the decreased production as a result of the Iranian Revolution. If any of you remember, if you go back that far, the long lines you had to wait just to get gas. But at that time, oil prices doubled in less than 12 months to $40 a barrel 40 years ago. Today, we're below $20 a barrel after a speculative peak of 184 barrels, $184 per barrel in June of 2008. So it'll be interesting to see the next wave of changes and how the energy industry will transition going forward. As an essential business and one that has its factory still in operation to serve our customers, we are concerned with this pandemic and the safety of our employees, suppliers, customers, and all our families and friends. We hope you have the ability to work in a safe environment and we hope soon we'll be back to a normal mode of operation. I'm not sure what that'll be, but hopefully soon. All our offices staff are, are working from home and those presenting today are working from home. So please bear with us if we run into any typical technical difficulties as we move through this process. We feel we put together some excellent segments geared toward our oil and gas customers addressing the topics of energy efficiency and optimization, carbon capture, storage and utilization, methane emission reduction, and lower carbon fuel options. So that'll take us about 15 minutes for each of those topics. And then we have a question and answer period at the end. But during this time, if you'll notice in the right side of your screen, you should see a chat box where we'd appreciate if you could put in your questions and we'll try to address them at the end of the presentation segment. We're also going to do a live polling where we'll get some feedback from you and, and you'll be able to see others' opinions on the whole issue of carbon reduction. So for some webinar information, we will have a recording of this. Uh, the slides will be made available as well, so you don't have to take all the notes. Um, and we, as mentioned, we would appreciate you putting in your questions into the question box so that at the end we can uh, try to specifically address them. Any issues that you may have, you can contact Kim Cruz uh, during this. She's online with us as well. So why a webinar on carbon reduction? Over the past year, we've had considerable interest on this topic. Despite the current and hopefully temporary downturn in the use of oil, we still feel it is an area that will have to be addressed to remain a vital industry over the long term. As you can see from this slide in the diagram in the left, our atmospheric concentration of CO2 is at its highest level in recorded history at just around 450 parts per million. With, you know, if you, if you, learn, then you look at the increasing that over the last 20 years, it's been pretty significant. The middle chart shows the continual rise in ambient temperatures with the av average global temperature increasing just a little over one degree C or 1.9 Fahrenheit, higher than the since you know the last 19th century with the warmest 19 of over the last 20 years, 19 of those have been the warmest unrecorded history. So on the right, for people like us who live in San Diego in a coastal environment, we're also seeing sea level rises. And over the last 10 years or so, we've seen a, a just over maybe 80 millimeters, 3.3 inches. But over the last few years, that acceleration has continued to grow. So a lot of statistics that say we have to be concerned about carbon in the atmosphere. If you also look at this slide, um, you see the projection if we continue at the pace we're at now that the CO2 will continue to increase. And if we don't do anything, the global temperatures will continue to rise where then it could result in some catastrophes as we're already starting to see fires and floods and all kinds of things. So the um, the international or the intercontinental panel on climate change suggests that we keep it to a temperature rise of 1.5 C, no more than 2 degrees C. So you see that in the future, if we continue to move at the pace we are, we're going to have to deploy ways to reduce our carbon footprint. 
But our next topic is methane emissions reductions. Obviously, with methane being 20 times stronger greenhouse gas over CO2, minimizing methane emissions is critical. So our speaker for this is Sean Garceau. Sean has been with solar turbines for 13 years now. Sean is serving as the lead engineer and product owner for solar methane emission reduction solutions and is a subject matter expert on compressor dry seals, wet seals, process control, and compressor surge control. So Sean, please take the, this time to present your material. Thank you very much. So I'm going to address over the next few minutes several areas in which solar turbines can reduce the methane uh, emissions for our customers. The first area I'll be addressing is the opportunity of methane uh, capturing for applications that use tandem dry seals. Inherent to tandem dry seals, methane is leaked across the primary dry seal to normally an atmospheric vent. This flow rate is normally between 2 to 12 SCFM, depending on the compressor size and operating pressure and speed. Another opportunity for compressors that operate with dry seals is capturing the gas that is located between the compressor's suction and discharge volume. This is the process gas that can normally be vented during a blowdown scenario. So looking at the first opportunity, which is capturing the gas from the primary dry seals, Solar has looked and reviewed uh, what are several different technologies in order to utilize this methane in other areas. So Solar has gone through and developed a solution called the dry seal recompression system. Uh, we abbreviate this as a DSR system. So the objective of the system and how it operates is it captures the gas from the primary dry seals, sends the gas to an accumulation system, which is then compressed and sent to various areas. These areas can be the customer station discharge header. Uh, suction header can be used for gas fuel for units that are in operation, auxiliary heating systems. So a wide variety of opportunities and uses for that gas. The second uh, area or point is that we have developed this system to use its own independent control system so that the system uh, does not impact the unit availability or the turbo machine availability. Uh, we offer the product in two different sizes, which addresses the various size and flow rates, which are seen through uh, process compressors, dry seals. So the second opportunity, as I alluded to in a previous slide, was the gas that is located between the uh, pipeline suction and discharge valves. This is normally a large amount of volume at some high pressure. So instead of depressurizing the compressor through a vent system, the gas can be pulled and recompressed and be injected into the, a station header or a discharge header. Again, it could be used by uh, other engines as gas fuel or auxiliary heating. So the system provides uh, methane gas at a high pressure that can be utilized anywhere within a station. Um, this system we've developed has two different sizes that we offer, uh, kind of based off of a um, standard pipeline uh, application or station where you have around 700 pounds of pressure within a pipe, uh, around 1,000 cubic feet. Uh, they can depressurize the system uh, between 8 to 24 hours depending on the size. Again, another independent control system for this product line uh, that is not directly tied to the turbo machinery control system to ensure turbo machinery availability. So the two pictures shown on this slide are actual installations that are uh, occur uh, that have gone on, have been commissioned, and are in operation. This is through a venture between Solar Turbines, the Pipeline Research Council International (PRCI), and a host site. Uh, on the left, we show the dry seal recompression system installed, and on the right, we show the process vent recompression system. Uh, these units are operational, and Solar is uh, collecting and reporting to the PRCI uh, board on the operation of this equipment. So when you looked at the dry seal recompression system and the process gas recompression system, there's an opportunity to combine the systems so that a single overall solution can provide 
the capturing of the process event and the dry seal event. This is shown in this product uh, and outline, which Solar notes as the PDS system or process event and dry seal recompression system. Same basic structure as has been presented, but with the benefit of a lower initial capital cost uh, overall, um, though the compressor is sized based off the process off of the dry seal flow rate. So process venting may be a little bit longer than the systems with the uh, process vent recompression system, which uses a larger compression system. Uh, Solar does offer the solutions uh, in multi-unit configurations as shown in the slide here, where multiple turbine machineries can feed to one accumulated system and be recompressed uh, into the, uh, the pipeline. And the system uh, has its own control system that uh, interacts with the turbine machinery system to know when to operate. Uh, in addition, uh, for tandem uh, applications, this can be two or three bodies. Uh, again, Solar has uh, solutions to address that based off of the proven uh, structure of a single uh, application or single body application. Again, expanding this uh, product line out, um, it, we have also offered the product where you can have a single uh, process vent recompression system uh, being connected to multiple uh, units. Uh, again, this is in a structure that you can blow down one unit while another one is in operation or while one unit's in pressurized hold. Gas will be brought down from the unit that is in pressurized hold and being re-injected uh, again into the suction header, discharge header of the station or be used for other means. Uh, in support of these products and for more information, Solar Turbines has a data sheet, uh, two product information letters, 279 and 280, which uh, we can always supply. That goes in a little more detail with regards to the product, its operations, sizes, and weights. Um, the objective of the product I've mentioned in the previous slides is to help our customers reduce to a near zero level with regards to their process uh, compressor operations. The product is designed to meet NEC and CEC class one div two and zone two applications in the ATEC and Senelec environments. Uh, for outside uh, installations where turbine halls don't have enough uh, room for some of those products, we offer both weather protection and noise reducing enclosures. The second topic I'd like to spend a few minutes on is uh, addressing the flaring of natural gas. In 2019, the United States Department of Energy released a, a very good uh, report regarding the flaring and venting that is occurring, especially in the United States Permian Basin. Uh, in looking at uh, this opportunity of moving the gas that is normally flared, uh, in the shell application, Solar Turbines has introduced the Solar Mobile Turbo Machinery product. This is based off of the Tor 60 engine. Uh, the objective of the SMT product line is for power generation and unconventional resource development. Uh, this is really looking at the shell wells and how to take the availability of natural gas that is local to the actual uh, area of operation and converting that into electrical power for various uh, uses. This can be used to uh, as customers move from recips to electric motors. Uh, this is also to set up local microgrids to reduce uh, the power solutions and infrastructure that may be required for remote sites. A couple bullet points of the solar mobile turbine machine product line using this Tor 60 engine uh, is a single trailer design that is fully integrated. It has its own hydraulic leveling system uh, and it has three main connections. So this is for quick installation where you connect the uh, medium voltage line, has a black start availability and you connect the gas fuel line. No alignments are needed. The coupling is uh, already installed and aligned from the factory. There's no crane lifts. There's no feet to uh, for off the ground. Um, for a, an amount of consumption of gas fuel, uh, I've noted it as 
in units of BTUs per hour because this product can run a wide range of wabis. And so um, by looking at your own gas composition at a site, we can determine the actual standard cubic feet that can be uh, mitigated through the use of conversion to power generation instead of flaring. Again, this product has several product snapshots for additional information. We have the data sheet of our product information, letter 279. And we also have a booklet that solar turbines can uh, send to our customers for some additional information about the opportunities that solar's mobile turbine machinery product can provide them. The last topic I'd like to spend a few minutes on is looking at other opportunities uh, for conversion of gas fuels to liquids. Uh, solar is uh, looking with uh, opportunities. One is with uh, Greylock, which is again a conversion of flare to fuels at a wide, uh, diff a wide range of fuel and rates. Uh, this is so that depending on the site conditions, if it's a low to a high gas intake, we convert this gas uh, into a liquid for transportation instead of into flaring. Uh, 